Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British rail critics, and my underwater train finders, Thomas Ward and Lord Captain Von Thrust III. You are the reason why this content remains glorious, which is a serious overestimation of my skills, but I digress. Today, we're going to go back to basics, and we're going to talk about five more of the best trains ever. Part five. Keep rolling up. There's a lot of great trains, and we're going to keep talking about them. Let's do it. The EMD AEM-7, and I'm just going to call it the AEM, because I'm not saying Dash 7 every single time was an electric locomotive built for Amtrak, specifically to replace the bitter failure that was the GEE-60, which I still have not put on the worst trains ever list, but I may do that someday. The AEMs were an exceptional piece of work for Amtrak. Alongside the F-40PHs, the AEMs became the backbone of the nationalized passenger rail line in America. They were operated mostly in the Northeast Corridor and the Keystone Corridor, as those were the major electrified portions of Amtrak's lines. Two other companies also saw use for the AEMs. Both Mark and SEPTA have utilized them effectively as well. They're reliable, they're very fast, and this is one of those times, and I don't think this has happened quite yet, where I can actually discuss these locomotives from personal experience. See, I have ridden on multiple trains that were pulled by AEMs. And I can tell you, they are a smooth ride for the passengers. I've had good experiences on Amtrak all around myself, and the AEMs were a big part of that. Said that they have been retired in recent years. Amtrak retired them in 2016, Mark did it in 2017, and SEPTA in 2018. Their last run was December 1st, 2018. Two units were sold to Caltrain, the SEPTA and Mark units are still stored, and two of the Amtrak units got preserved. The remainder, however, have been scrapped. Still, they've been running on the rails since the late 70s, and that's a pretty good run for an electric locomotive in the modern age. It's also worth mentioning they were actually based on the Swedish RC4s. So, hey, thanks Sweden! The General Electric 44-Ton Switcher These little devils were built between 1940 and 1956. They were designed for industrial and light switching duties, and they actually replaced some steam locomotives that had previously done those jobs. They were efficient and strong for their size, but I bet you're wondering, why 44 tons? That seems oddly specific, and yes, it was. See, these were designed specifically to circumvent a union issue. When diesel started coming into the fray, replacing steam locomotives, railroad unions were trying to preserve firemen's jobs because, technically speaking, a diesel didn't actually require a second person to be in the cab, necessarily. In 1937, what was called the 90,000 pound rule was introduced, and it stipulated specifically that any locomotive weighing 90,000 pounds or more, or 45 short tons, would be required to have a fireman regardless of whether it was a diesel or really anything. If it was that heavy, it was getting a fireman, period. So the railroads were like, oh, okay, well, we'll do that. We could play that game. So they specifically requested a switcher diesel that weighed less than the 45 short tons. Hence, the 44 ton switcher was created. And they were very good, very impressive little pieces of work, and served for a great deal of time. Not just in North America, but Australia, Saudi Arabia, South America, India, France, Sweden, all over the place these little guys operated. And many are still preserved, so you may have actually seen one at a Heritage Railway Museum. The London and North Eastern Railway Gresley Classes A1 and A3. These have been a consistent request for this list for a while, and believe me, I get it. The reason I put two different classes in the same category is that they were basically the same thing. The A3s were just an improvement of the A1s, and most of the A1s actually wound up being converted to A3s. Designed by the legendary Sir Nigel Gresley and built between 1922 and 1935, these specifics were an incredible achievement for British rail lines back in the day. They were fast, they were powerful, and they served the railways for years. With the last one, number 60052, not being withdrawn until January of 1966. They are a much beloved locomotive by British rail fans, and with good reason, they were amazing. And while the vast majority of the class was scrapped, fortunately, 6103, known as the Flying Scotsman, which was withdrawn in 1963, 
was preserved at the National Railway Museum in York, so you can still see one of Sir Nigel Gresley's crowning achievements for yourself. The New York Central Hudson. 464, which became known as the Hudson Type in America, was probably most famous for its role on the New York Central Railroad. There were actually several different models, J1, J2, and J3, all built between 1927 and 1938. A total of 275 were produced, and these were the beacons of New York Central for years. They were famous for pulling some of their best passenger trains, like the 20th Century Limited and the Empire State Express, but they were actually great for freight duties too. They're probably most famous in their distinctive streamlining phase, but this could be removed, revealing a more typical looking steam locomotive. But don't let that fool you, these things could travel up to at least 123 miles per hour, or 198 kilometers an hour. And they probably could have gone faster, but due to speed restrictions, they never actually pushed them beyond that officially. They served for decades, but sadly, every single one would be scrapped by the late 1950s. The only exception is one of their tenders, which belonged to J1D 5313. It was converted to a steam heat car, and is preserved at the Steamtown National Historic Site. It's a shame that none of the actual Hudsons were kept, because they were a phenomenal piece of technical prowess. The British Rail Standard Class 9F. Oh. Yep. Yep, that's about right. Built between 1954 and 1960, very late in the era of steam locomotives, the Class 9F is considered by some to be the ultimate steam locomotive when it comes to British rail lines. These things were amazing. They were huge, 210 zeros, but they didn't really lose any efficiency despite their great size, and they were capable of hauling both freight and passenger services effectively. Despite only operating for a brief period of time, they were a common sight for rail fans of that era, and the last one of this class, number 92220, Evening Star, was actually the final steam locomotive that was built by British Railways in 1960. However, they couldn't escape the impending modernization plan that saw fit to remove every single steam locomotive operated by British Rail and replace it with diesels, a lot of which were actually more terrible than the steam locomotives they were meant to replace. The last one was withdrawn in 1968, which was the last year of steam traction on British lines. But fortunately, nine examples of this amazing locomotive survived into preservation, and a few of which are actually in running condition. So if you're ever in the UK, it's still possible to go and appreciate what some consider to be the ultimate locomotive in British steam development. I look forward to people debating that in the comments. But either way, the 9Fs are great. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.